power, endurance, strength, mobility, flexibility, injury prevention, less pain, more comfort. I'm talking about shoulder function and performance. And the internet can teach us so many things. Can it teach us how to build a better shoulder program? In today's episode, we are going to answer just that question. So stick around. Welcome back everybody. In today's episode, we are going to see if a person without any particular scientific background or training going online to do a internet search can assemble an actual functional shoulder strength and or rehab program based on what's available out there. So many of my clients come in after having searched the internet for solutions to their problems and finding partial solutions. And they end up in my office and together we look at what they've learned, what they've discovered, what they've been doing already, and I basically fill in the gaps. So that's my goal today. I'm gonna to bring you along as I tour the internet's response to a few common searches that we might run for a shoulder program. I'm gonna look at general shoulder strength, strengthening exercise, and we're gonna see what's out there. I'm Burke. I'm a sports and orthopedic physical therapist, and I'm happy you are here. Okay, here's the plan. Let's examine a few of the top ranked websites that come up when we do some common searches for shoulder exercises. I'm going to pick out my favorites. I'll let you know any that I don't recommend you do, and we will compile by the end of this video a list of my recommendations, plus I'll fill in the gaps. If there's anything that does not come up that should, I'll be sure and put that on the program as well. So by the end of this, you will have a great, perfect little program you can take with you and use to keep your shoulder healthy and to recover if you have a shoulder injury. Okay, so for backup, I've opened MedBridge. It's an app that we use in our clinic that allows me to provide custom home program information for my patients. So I've got that open and uh, if I need to, we'll pull up some exercises from that. So let's begin. Let's do a search for best shoulder exercises. Let's we'll see what happens. All right, Gold's Gym, seven shoulder exercises for strength and stability. Let's pop that up here and see what we have. You know what I'm gonna do too? Let's go ahead and make a document. This is a blank document and we will call this Burke and the Internet Build a Better Shoulder Program. There we go. All right. Seven shoulder exercises. Do them twice a week. You know, I actually really like that. I think twice a week tends to allow for a higher level of effort including recovery time throughout the week. So I'm on board with that. I'd also propo propose exercising three times in a nine day cycle. That's another really common way. So we're gonna say twice a week or three times in nine days. All right, that's gonna be our first little take home here. Choose your weight. I think this is pretty good. Easily go past 10 in good form. Try a slightly heavier weight. Hey, it's Gold's Gym. I'm not surprised that they have some pretty solid kind of recommendations. This is nothing too unusual, but just good advice. All right, dumbbell front raise. I'm gonna just scan these quickly, actually. Lateral raise, reverse fly, seated military press, standing dumbbell, shoulder press, one arm. So three that are pretty much the same. Shoulder raise, so shoulder raise and this one, these are going to be similar. But I'll tell you right now, I prefer this version right here. Okay, so um, we basically have a lot of deltoid in this, a lot of pec, some shoulder blade. So what I like about this, when we look at the research on which exercises are the most targeted for the shoulders, the overhead raise is a very powerful move for the anterior and the middle delt, as well as the pecs. And this one down here, the plank dumbbell shoulder raise, 
This one is great for hitting all of those scapular stabilizers. So I would say uh, I'm gonna pull two exercises from this page. We're gonna do an overhead press and we're going to do a plank dumbbell shoulder raise. And that's my first addition to our program. Let's, let's give this a fun little, here we go. Overhead press, plank, dumbbell raise. How about spelling sometimes? And then we'll just copy the link from this page. Boom, Gold's Gym, thank you. Here we go, number two. Man of Many has the 10 best shoulder workouts and exercises. Let's see what those look like. Oh, if you do these, you may or may not end up looking like that. That's possible. Muscle overview, what are they? Extrinsic, intrinsic. Interesting. Okay, diversion. The fingers of my hand, this is your rotator cuff. My hand itself, my wrist, my forearm. Essentially, this is going to be scapula, trunk, core, deep core. So what does your rotator cuff actually do? Well, it engages your humerus and keeps it centered more or less in your scapula in what's called the glenoid so that as you move, your muscles are constantly rebalancing for the right amount of tension. That's it in a nutshell. That's what the rotator cuff does. You can see if I lift any of my fingers off, if I really challenge myself here, if I pick any of these up, there's a good chance that this is gonna fall at this weight because now all of a sudden I'm underpowered for what I need to do to control this. This is exactly what happens with shoulder injuries to the rotator cuff. We lose that stability. Now, as we're looking at exercises, I want to see rotator cuff directed exercises, and I also want to see scapular and core exercises. Our first couple that we pull from Gold's, I would call those scapular core, big mover, extrinsic muscle kind of moves. And I have not yet seen the little intrinsics. So that's just an aside. I'm gonna keep looking for that. So here we go. 10 best shoulder workouts, overhead shoulder press. We've already got that. We're covered. Seated dumbbell shoulder press. Again, we're covered. Front raise. I do like this one. This one is good. Let's put that on there. I think we want a front raise. Front raise. So the difference between the front raise and the overhead press and the plank dumbbell raise, the front raise is basically going to engage our pecs a little more just because of the length of this lever arm. That's the primary difference. Reverse pec deck fly. Now this is starting to get good. These back flies, we did see back flies, I think on golds, right? So bent over dumbbell lateral raise, back flies. These are going to strengthen rhomboids, back muscles, back body. Some people refer to that. And I do like that. So uh, my preference though is to do it bent over like this or in a plank. So I'm going to suggest we do this bent over dumbbell lateral raise. So bent, bent over lateral raise. That's gonna do a lot of good things. Do this with your hand in different positions. I'm gonna move a little so you can see. With your hand in different positions. Most people show doing that bent raise with your palm facing down. Go light on the weight and do this with your thumb pointing up. And then you could also do one with your thumb pointing slightly down, but within the range of your shoulder. Okay, so bent over lateral raise, very, alignment of hand. Actually, really, it's the alignment of your arm that we're gonna vary, all right. Lateral raise, push press. It's another version of an overhead press. So we already have that covered. Reverse cable crossover. Uh, this is gonna be one of these where you're pulling the weight out to your side like that. So you're going, coming from up to down. This motion when we come from high and across the body to down and behind. 
This is called a D1 PNF pattern, and it's considered a diagonal pattern or movement pattern. And diagonal patterns are very, very effective at targeting those smaller stabilizers. So we're gonna want some kind of diagonal pattern in there. The reverse cable crossover is like a heavy duty gym version of that. We teach this a lot in the clinic using two hands to actually do chops where we're engaging a lot of core. You could do the cable version, you could do a band version, but I do think this is good. And I'm gonna call it what I would call it in the clinic, which is a D1 PNF shoulder extension. That's what that's called. So we're gonna go D1 PNF shoulder extension. One arm cable lateral raise, more with the lateral raises. So I'm not surprised that a lot of these exercises are, uh, I don't wanna say they're for show, but they definitely are about developing those larger muscles. So I've seen a few that are getting into some of the deeper muscles, but most of these I would say so far are about looking good at the gym. Standing barbell shrugs, Nothing wrong with that, by the way. That's totally fine, and the conditioning is good. Have I seen injuries come from overdoing these kind of gym exercises? Absolutely, so be careful. But in general, I'm not opposed to getting swole. All right, just saying. Okay, that's about it. Shrugs, upper traps, delts. I think pound for pound, I wanna choose exercises that are gonna be a little more functional, so I'm not gonna put that on our list. So there we go. Let's copy this link. Let's go. Men's Journal, 30 best shoulder exercises and workouts of all times. That seems like a lot. Let's see what they have for us. All right. And they're just pictures. Looks like there might be comments if I give them a moment. A lot of ads. I don't think I like that. Okay. So I can, so I can blow these up. All right. So um, we're just gonna have to comment on this. Overhead pressing and lateral raises can only do so much. Here are 30 shoulder workouts that will improve your flexibility, add size, get stronger, and complete your physique. All right, well, if that's your goal, then, uh, then this could be a good option for you. Overhead press, we've already seen this. Lateral raises, seen it. Forward raises with a, uh, a crown touch, top of the head. Okay, now this is starting to get good. This is a super key move. Sometimes I will do this uh, Hawaiian style, I'll have a band basically attached to the, the wall somehow or use cable like this. And we're gonna pull this as if I'm gonna take a lay, like a flower wreath and place it over my head. So that is the style, that's the motion that we're going for right there. And this is great because we've got elbows away from the body and we actually are working this motion which is external rotation. So, so I like this. I'm not exactly sure what they call this, but this is basically going to be, um, this is gonna be a high row with uh, external rotation. I've had a, a therapist I work with call these robbers, where you're basically, hold your hands up, kind of like that. So we'll call them robbers because that's sort of a, a good cue for the basic movement. And it's important when you do this that the resistance is coming from in front of you in order to really get the back of your shoulder blade to work. How far do you go? You'll see a lot of technique videos where they show even with your body. I'll tell you this, if your pecs are tight and your shoulder blade does not retract that far, don't go that far. Stop with your elbows just a little bit in front of the plane of your body. That's actually going to keep it aligned with your shoulder blade better and keep you from straining your shoulder joint. So robbers are going on there. I like it. And I'll just put a little note here to Q. This is um, high ER for external rotation. Uh, how do you spell lay? Lay, maybe L-E-I, something like that. I can look it up. Lay, 
and or robber style motion. Okay, here's another high row, kind of in the shrug family. I think relative, as far as the research goes, this does not pop up a lot, this particular exercise. So I can't really say if I like it or don't like it. I would say there's probably other exercises that might be a little more targeted. And this one, just because the wrists are down, unless you're moving through this po position to a catch or a snatch or some kind of an Olympic style lift, this isn't necessarily where I want to stop the motion. So if you've been doing rows like this, kind of these high, high rows, I would go ahead and work on the catch because that's going to take your shoulder out of an impingement zone. Here we go. These are basically, uh, I actually like this program a little bit more because they are working a little bit more on the rotators. This still won't be my favorite, but it's not, it's not bad. Okay, we've already seen something like this from the plank. This is another good way to do it. This is part of a family of exercises that in therapy we call scapular stability exercises. Colloquially, they're called the I's, Y's, T's, W's. Okay, so I's, Y's, T's, W's, and you do them face down with weight, with band, from a plank, on a bench, lots of different ways you can do this. They are excellent. So I'm gonna put on here right now, scapular stability, face down. Eyes, Y's, T's, W's. All right, pretty good. So Men's Journal, they're treating us all right. So here we have our first, what I would consider like an Olympic lift. And Olympic lifts, part of what makes them so useful is that there is such a wide range of movement within an Olympic lift. And the important thing with those, I recommend them and you need a coach. You absolutely have to have a good coach, whether it's a personal trainer. Uh, many PTs are not actually that well versed just out of school in Olympic style lifting. So unless your therapist is also an Olympic lifter themselves and they've had the training, if you can find that, then that's a great marriage of technique plus physical therapy knowledge. If you can't, however, it's okay to work with a coach on this because it is important to do this right. You will have to move at the speed of your slowest member, okay? Your weakest muscle group is going to be what you are really going to cap your resistance at, just so you don't blow yourself out. So Olympic lifts, we're gonna just put maybe question mark, Olympic lifts, because truly they're a little bit specialized. We've seen this one before, the high row. All right, here we're starting to get into um, some band stuff. So just a quick note about that, I really like the band version. And if you've ever worked with bands and free weights before, band resistance increases the further away from the anchor you go. So the difference between an anchor on the floor, bringing my hand up to here and bringing my hand up to here, it gets harder and harder. And that's often towards the ends of the joints motion. So sometimes the challenge with bands is that in the mid range of movement, the band resistance might not be enough, honestly, because you're limiting it to get through the whole motion. However, some of the things that I really like about it is that it creates a bit more core activation. Um, and that's because as you get towards the end of that motion, um, you're increasing the resistance and that causes something called overflow in your core muscles. So your core muscles basically have to brace a little bit harder. Um, there are some interesting changes in compression in the joints and shear, and that's because the resistive force is not pulling with gravity always like a dumbbell or a barbell, but it's actually pulling away from the anchor. So wherever you put that anchor is going to change how your joint loads or shears or both. So I use bands a ton because I can move that anchor point to do really selective things. So it's a lateral raise. We've seen that many times so far, but with the bands, it feels a little bit different. And then the forward raise, this would be another 
good way to do our forward raise. So I'm gonna go in and edit our front raise slash forward raise. And we'll just say dumbbells, plate, and or bands. Those are all gonna be A-OK -okay for that. Okay, same thing with our back fly. This we saw earlier. This could be with weight or bands, bent over lateral raise. Okay, this one's a little bit uh, similar to our high row robber corona for the head kind of a thing. So uh, we don't need to add anything to that one. Um, this is kind of cool, like a different variation of an overhead press from a pike. I do like this one. I would call this one a fun variation. I'm not gonna put it on the list. And then um, a row to, this is a scapular stabilizer. It's another variation of our I's, Y's, and T's, that kind of thing. I actually do like this one. Uh, I'm not gonna put it though because uh, I don't want the program to get too long and there are still a few missing pieces. Okay, so same thing. So if this is the Y, can you see the Y there? This is gonna be the T. And these are kind of like, they look like bear walks to me. This is dips. Those are good for the triceps, press ups. I do like press ups, but you know, some people have tightness in their wrists and press ups don't work. So if we're gonna do this kind of motion, I like to do it either upright like this pushing with band resistance, or if you have a gym using a selectorized machine, or I like to do it face up using dumbbells or a bar. So we'll go ahead and add that one. And this is basically gonna be a chest press, dumbbells, bands, barbells, etc. upright, or Face up, also known as supine. Overhead press, we've seen. This one is kind of a cool variation. This one is a compound motion. We're coming up like this, we're coming out into this position, and then we're extending from here. We've baked these into enough of these other moves that we don't need this version. Although these versions do add variety, they make it a little more interesting. And so uh, there's really nothing wrong with these. I'm just not gonna put them in this core program. I actually like that one. Um, we've seen this. This is almost looks like a little bit of a deadlift. Let me see what happens if I pull this, make this a little bigger. Yeah, this is a little bit of a ballistic style move. So we'll fit that into the Olympic category, Olympic slash ballistic movements. So I'm not gonna put that on one of our foundational moves. This is a deadlift, okay? This is what a good deadlift looks like. We're starting with the weight low and we're standing up essentially glutes, hamstrings, quads, back, shoulders, everything. Yes, 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 must have a deadlift. Deadlift, and I like the picture of that because his form was really good. What do we have here? Okay, so this is sometimes called a farmer's carry. Essentially, you're walking while you're holding weight. It's super good. I've issued this to two patients in this last week to start to build some endurance in these muscles. I think it's pretty good, so I'm gonna put it in here. Farmer's carry. Basically load the weight to the point where walking 20 steps this way and 20 steps back feels like a little bit of a workout. You're in the right spot, okay? This is another a little bit of a ballistic move. I'm not gonna put it in there. We've seen this one before. This is our chest press. We put that on there. Overhead raise using the machine, back flies. All right, so that's it. So I'm gonna say we got actually some pretty good programming from uh, Men's Journal. That's six from the Men's Journal right there. So that's actually a pretty good one. I could do this all day clearly. So at this point, let's take a quick scan. I'm going to identify any that I think are missing and we're going to add those in and then that's going to be good for this session. So let's go back, take a look. So what do we want to add to this here? 
Okay, here's the thing about physical therapy exercises is they're not often that sexy. So we're looking at small stabilizing muscles, muscles that help you control and coordinate all the different joints that make up your shoulder. We've got the big movers. This collection right here, I think it's pretty good. Let's look through it. We have chest, we have delt, we have back. You could always do a little bit more back. There's not a ton here, but the broad strokes are there. So what we need now are we need, we need the little muscles. Give the little muscles a chance. External rotation of the shoulder. It's gotta be in there. Let's bump over to MedBridge. And we'll do a search, shoulder external rotation. And you can see there are lots of different ways to do this. We have one shoulder external rotation exercise so far, and let's add another. And this prone one, this one is pretty good. I do like this one, okay? Begin lying on your front with one arm hanging off the edge of a bed or table, holding a dumbbell. Place your shoulder blades inward toward your spine and pull your arm up, bending your elbow and keeping it close to your body. Rotate your forearm out to your side. Reverse the movement and repeat. So that one's going on there. I'm just gonna put twice a week on this one, three sets of 10, we'll add that. Here's our program right here. I think we need something that's going to be a little bit higher level as well. Let's see what we can find. See, these are rehab exercises. So a lot of these are going to be quite a bit easier than the other set of exercises where we're really moving a lot of weight. This one right here is a bit of a classic and it actually is very effective and targeted. It's shoulder external rotation using a dumbbell laying on your side. So we're gonna put that one in there, okay? Internal rotation, that's the opposite motion. If this is external, internal is pulling from outside in, and that needs to be on here as well. This is the one that I'm gonna choose, okay? It's standing, so there's a little bit more stabilizing involved twice a week a little internal rotation. Let's go ahead and add to our scapular program. Let's see if I do a search. All right, here we go. Prone W scapular retraction. Here's your starting position with the arms on your side. And here's the ending position. That's gotta be on there. Very easy to add weights to that. So we basically want a forward raise with a band around our forearms that we can engage, engage against while we're raising our arms up. Shoulder flexion, serratus activation with resistance. So you're gonna start in this position with your hands low, band pulled apart using your rotator cuff, and we're going to raise the arms up while you maintain that pressure. You can imagine that you're, you have a stick or a dowel or some object in between your hands and you do not want this distance to change as you come up. You wanna maintain the stability of your shoulder while you raise it. And you can see that right there. So this is a good one. That absolutely needs to be on there, serratus activation. Okay, how many is that? 16, so this is a handful of movements. I recommend breaking this 16 into uh, maybe two workouts, uh, eight each, and you can do these two workouts uh, on back-to-back -back days and then take a day off where you just do something else uh, and repeat that two to three times within that nine day period of time. So how did the internet do? The internet unsurprisingly gave us the big movers. They gave us the show muscles. A lot of these exercises, however, do include the smaller muscles. So just because they're a little bit on that side in terms of their goal, their target, doesn't make them bad exercises and they do good things if you allow them to. So if you can do those big move exercises, you have to have great technique and you have to work your way through the range, do them at a variety of speeds, use full range of motion. Those are all little tips to get the most out of your exercises. 
And then I've just added some of the specific ones to use this example again. These are the ones that are gonna help you hold on to the bottle. They're gonna help your body hold on to your humerus through all of these ranges. Remember, you are only as strong as your weakest link in your shoulder. So make sure that you know your shoulder well, you work through these moves, and any moves that are giving you trouble, spend a little time with, ratchet down, work through it, remediate it, come get some help from a good PT where you live, and thanks for watching.